you last night? I read. I went over lines. Play a different song! But something really weird is happening at home. Someone's fine right now! Can we talk about it? I can't. I gotta go to karate. I love you so much! AMC Screen Unseen has been providing some real hidden gems I never would have seen if it hadn't been for the mystery movie nights. This week I got to preview Your Monster, a movie that's half rom-com, half horror, and no fun. But exactly what went wrong with Your Monster? And does it hurt the actors' careers? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood! Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. Sometimes a movie comes along with so much potential and then it just fizzles out. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. Your Monster is one of those movies. Directed by Caroline Lindy and starring Melissa Barrera and Tommy Dewey, it attempts to blend horror with romantic comedy, but unfortunately, it fails at both. What we end up with is a confusing, underdeveloped story that raises more questions than it answers. And while Tommy Dewey gives a solid performance, the rest of the film collapses under the weight of its ambitious but clumsy execution. Is it a horror movie? No. Let's start with the horror aspect. Because if you're tuning in to see your monster expecting to be scared, you'll be sorely disappointed. There's a monster living in Laura's house, but rather than being terrifying, this creature played by Tommy Dewey is more like a grumpy, misunderstood roommate. His portrayal, while charming and occasionally amusing, lacks the kind of menace you'd expect from a horror film. The movie teases horror elements, but it never commits to them. Instead of giving us genuine scares, your monster half-heartedly leans into its horror-adjacent premise. A monster hiding in a closet should send chills down your spine, right? Wrong! Here, the monster's biggest crime is fighting over the thermostat and engaging in a sitcom-esque battle of wills with Laura. If you thought monsters were meant to embody primal fears, this one seems more concerned with maintaining room temperature. What could have been a thrilling narrative about inner demons or fear of the unknown ends up being a collection of missed opportunities. Is it a romantic comedy? Also, no. If the horror doesn't land, surely the romantic comedy aspect will save the film, right? Well, not quite. The film tries to give us a quirky, unconventional love story between Laura and the monster, but it's hard to invest in their relationship when the script does such a poor job of building emotional stakes. The movie sets up the monster as a metaphor for Laura's repressed anger and trauma, but rather than exploring that in a meaningful way, we get awkward scenes of them cohabitating, bickering like an old married couple. The romantic tension feels forced, and the comedic moments are few and far between. Dewey's charm makes the monster somewhat likable, but his good-natured performance isn't enough to carry the movie. It's like giving someone a band-aid when they're missing a limb, it just doesn't cut it. The cancer plotline is a shallow dive, too. One of the most puzzling aspects of the film is how poorly it handles Laura's cancer diagnosis. You'd think a story about a woman battling cancer and being dumped by a boyfriend during treatment would be rich with emotional complexity, but your monster doesn't seem interested in exploring that territory. The fact that Laura has cancer is mentioned at the beginning of the film, but after that it's mostly ignored. This could have been a profound exploration of how trauma shapes us and those around us, how illness can make us feel monstrous, or how relationships crumble under pressure. Instead, the cancer plotline feels like an afterthought, a mere plot device to give Laura some backstory and justify her relationship breakdown with Jacob, played by Edmund Donovan. Jacob's decision to dump Laura when she was diagnosed with cancer is a significant moment, but the film doesn't delve into the emotional fallout from that betrayal. Was Laura angry? 
Did she feel abandoned? Did it deepen her connection with the monster who represents her inner rage? Who knows? Because the film doesn't bother to explore any of these questions. It's as if the filmmakers threw the cancer diagnosis in to add drama, but then decided it wasn't worth pursuing. Talk about a missed opportunity. Speaking of Jacob, his character is one of the most frustrating parts of the movie. Jacob is the boyfriend who dumps Laura when things get tough. You'd think this would be an essential plot point, but the movie barely touches on it. He's portrayed as a deadbeat who promises Laura the lead in a musical they worked on together, only to drop her from the production when she becomes ill. This makes him the asshole. But here's the thing, this aspect of the story just vanishes into thin air. We're left wondering why Jacob made those choices or how Laura felt about it, but none of it is explored. Did Laura's relationship with Jacob trigger her psychotic break, if we're even calling it that? Was the monster a manifestation of her emotional trauma from the breakup? These are the kinds of questions that a well-written film would address, but not this movie. Instead, Jacob fades into the background never to be heard from again, as if the filmmakers just forgot he existed throughout a lot of scenes. If you thought the rest of the movie was a mess, wait until you get to the ending. Was the monster real, or was he a figment of Laura's imagination? Did Laura suffer a psychotic break after her breakup and cancer diagnosis? Was the entire film just an extended metaphor for Laura's inner turmoil? These are all valid questions, but unfortunately none of them are answered. The film leaves us hanging, which might work if it had been intentional or thought-provoking, but in this case it just feels lazy. A lack of closure isn't mysterious, it's frustrating. It's as if the filmmakers didn't know how to end the movie, so they just didn't. Maybe the monster was real, or maybe Laura was just going through an extreme emotional crisis. We'll never know, because the movie doesn't seem to care enough to tell us. And unlike movies such as Pan's Labyrinth that are left up to interpretation and how the viewer chooses to view the story, your monster leaves no room for that level of nuance. One of the few redeeming qualities of your monster is Tommy Dewey's performance. Dewey plays the monster with a sort of sarcastic charm that's hard not to like. Even though the character is underwritten, Dewey manages to infuse some life into the role. He's the kind of guy you'd want to grab a drink with, not necessarily the terrifying creature living under your bed. His deadpan delivery and goofy interactions with Laura give the film some much needed levity, even if they can't salvage the entire production. Unfortunately, Dewey's performance, while enjoyable, isn't enough to keep the film from sinking. It's like putting a cherry on top of a melted sundae. Sure, it's nice, but it doesn't fix the bigger problem. Overall, this was a movie that doesn't know what it wants to be. It wants to be a horror film, a romantic comedy, and a profound exploration of trauma, but it doesn't succeed at any of these things. The tone is all over the place, the characters are underdeveloped, and the plot raises questions it never bothers to answer. If you're looking for a horror movie, skip this one, it won't scare you. If you're looking for a rom-com, you'll be left wondering where the romance or even the comedy even is. And if you're hoping for a deep dive into human emotion and trauma, well, you'll be just as disappointed as Laura was when Jacob dumped her. In the end, Your Monster is a film that had potential, but ultimately failed to live up to it. The monster might have been charming, but the movie wasn't. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Your Monster? And did you think the film addressed the bigger questions? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.